you're ready to start the guided tour. Each of the titles you see on the left is a short session playing back a series of actions on your Macintosh. This tape will tell you how to use your Macintosh and the Macintosh itself will show you what the tape is describing. During these sessions, the Macintosh won't respond to the mouse or the keyboard. The actions you see on your screen were carried out and saved on your Macintosh beforehand. While these recorded actions are played back, your Macintosh cannot detect any present actions from the mouse or the keyboard. If you want to practice the actions you see and hear about, just wait till the end of the session. At the end of each short session, you can either stop your tape recorder to practice what you've learned or continue to the next session. You can also repeat the session if you like. To start the first session, without touching the mouse button, position the pointer to point inside the box that says, Show me my electronic desk. Don't click the mouse button yet. In a moment, you'll hear a series of three tones. By clicking the mouse button, as soon as you hear the third tone, you'll synchronize the actions on your Macintosh to the words on your tape. If you make a mistake in synchronizing the two, don't panic. Don't try to stop the Macintosh. Let it run through the session. It is short and you'll soon be back to your guided tour screen. Rewind your tape back to the three tones for that particular session and get set to synchronize again. Ready to start on the first session? Be sure the pointer is pointing inside the box that says, Show me my electronic desk. Listen to the three tones now. Without moving the mouse, click the mouse button as soon as you hear the third tone. As the user of a Macintosh, you now have a new kind of workspace, your electronic desktop. The gray area you see on your screen is your desktop. This desktop, like any other, has some useful and familiar objects on it. These objects have names, but more importantly, they also have pictures above their names. These pictures, called icons, make your electronic desktop very easy to work with. This is the icon for the disk you put in your disk drive. This is a trash can where you'll throw away what you don't need. And this is for copying from one disk to another. Your electronic desktop makes possible some things that you couldn't do otherwise. Some of what you can do is in menus at the top of your screen. The words you see at the top in the menu bar are titles of menus. To look at one of the menus, you point to its title, press the mouse button, and hold it. The commands appear instantaneously, almost as if you pull down a window shade. This is why they are called pull-down menus. They stay hidden until you need them, and they go away when you're done with them. For almost everything you do on your new desk, you go through two steps. First, you select the object that you want to do something with by clicking on it. You know that it's selected because it's highlighted. Next, you go to a menu you need, hold down the mouse button, and choose a command to act on the selected object. To choose a command, you point to the title of the menu, press and hold the mouse button, and drag to the command you need. Notice how the commands highlight as you point to them. By letting go of the mouse button when a command is highlighted, you choose that command to act on your selection. Some of the commands are dimmed. Those are the ones that aren't appropriate at the moment. After looking at a menu, if you decide not to use any of the commands in it, drag off the menu and let go of the mouse button. The object we've selected is the disk. Let's drag to open. Your Macintosh opens a window showing you the contents of that disk. We'll look at the contents shortly. Let's first reverse the previous action. Go to the File menu and choose Close this time to close the window. The Open and Close commands are central to the way you'll work with your Macintosh. To start using an application program, you'll select it and open it. To stop working on a document you've created with any of the applications, you'll save it and close it. Let's now look at the contents of that disk. What's on the disk is again represented with icons. The hand in action represents an application. The sheet of paper stands for documents you've created. The empty folder provides you with folders to put your documents in. And the programs your Macintosh uses to do its work are represented with miniature Macintoshes. Select one by clicking. Now point to the selected object, 
press the mouse button and drag it somewhere else in the window. Select another one and move that one too. You can organize what you have on your disk in the way that's most comfortable to you. If you click a second time on an object right after selecting it, you'll open it. This is a shortcut for opening. Don't try to use the shortcut yet. If you open an object without intending to, just close the window by choosing Close from the File menu and Continue. You can also select more than one object at a time. Position the pointer outside the objects you want to select, hold down the mouse button and drag. A rectangular outline lets you know which objects you're including. As soon as you release the mouse button, all of the included objects are selected. Now point to any of the selected ones, press and drag, and you move all of them together. To change the selection, just click on the next object you want to select. The previous objects are automatically deselected. You can also deselect your last selection by clicking anywhere outside the icon. We've come to the end of this session. To go back to the guided tour screen, there's a menu entitled Training with a single command named Quit. It's there so that you can quit your desktop and go back to the guided tour screen anytime you want. This is a special command on your guided tour disk. It doesn't appear on your system disk. Let's choose the quit command from the training menu and go back to where we started.